So here's my mass spectrometer. Uh, unfortunately, I had a filament failure earlier, so I've not demonstrated running. Uh, this is probably be one of the last times the machine's on, though I make space for another experiment. So I'll start off with the chamber. Um, basically, all the exciting stuff happens inside of the chamber. So in there, we have a parallel plate accelerator. Uh, we have an ion beam that's sourced by a hot filament. And um, so that's where the ionization occurs, and then the beam is accelerated between two parallel plates. Uh, all within a magnetic field, there's a small aperture at the end of the accelerator, such that the beam is collimated, and uh, the collimated beam is then deflected either towards or around uh, Faraday cup via the magnetic field. So you can see the coils here. Uh, coils are powered by a 210 amp power supply that I built down here, which is switched and throttled off of big IGBTs that run off run from this control cabinet. Uh, control cabinet also sources the high voltage. Uh, there's some relays in there that switch an ion pump power supply, which right now is running at 6 kilovolts, and that's the accelerator potential between the plates. Uh, so then the signal is detected on the Faraday cup. It goes through my home-built amplifier. The signal from the amplifier goes down onto the scope, where we can then read out the signal on the scope. And uh, down here we have several power supplies that are uh, essentially just for regulating the amount of power flowing to the filament. Uh, so this is uh, an accelerator power supply to pull the electrons off the filament, and this is a current regulator for the filament. Uh, this unit down here is a bandpass filter, so we have that on here just to filter out 60 hertz noise. That's uh, essentially just interference from AC electronics running. Uh, so now we'll check out the vacuum system. So it's a two-stage high vacuum system. Uh, I've uh, one and a half liter per second roughing pump, pretty standard. Uh, then we have a uh, 56 liter turbo molecular pump, which is probably getting 10 to the minus 6 tors under this setup pretty easily. It is a bell jar setup with a lot of surface area. Chamber as is is not bakeable, so probably lucky if I get 10 to the minus 6, maybe maybe even 10 to the minus 7 if I run the pump for a while. It's a pretty good pump. It's a liquid cooled system. I have been baking the pump, um, but not the rest of the chamber. Probably baking the pump doesn't do too much in that case. I have two thermocouple gauges on it at the moment. Had an ion gauge a while ago, but some problems with the controller, so I took that off. Just put on another thermocouple gauge. It's not too interesting to look at those now. They're just zeroed out. Uh, so this is the control unit for the entire vacuum system. We have the turbo controller. Uh, we have uh, main breaker switch, breaker switch for roughing pump, breaker switch for auxiliary heater, uh, built-in thermocouple gauge, and then auxiliary thermocouple gauge. Um, I think that's pretty much the entire setup. So I'll be disassembling this machine probably this coming weekend and uh, kind of make space for my particle accelerator. I also need the turbo pump back for the particle accelerator. So this is probably the last time it will run. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to invest the time to replace the filament. There it is.